Is that a 1.44 megabyte floppy drive? Oh, that's better. Hard drive. Much, much better. Okay, file server. Is it possible to transfer your files in a really effective way? Let's inspect some hardware that could handle this task that won't cost a fortune. The HP Z420, very capable machine. Now, very simple solution here for 40 terabytes. Let's launch into it. We're turning this particular machine into a file server, a very powerful file server. Racer Z Studios presents in the HP Z420. Very, very capable. Check out the motherboard designations there. There are two to keep an eye out for that take different CPUs, V1, V2. Also, check out the RAM. There's a certain specification for each of these. Most of them will come with 1600, but the max amount is also CPU dependent. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Ah, oh, there they are, those beautiful RAM modules. That is the highest specification there. These are 1600 megahertz, a little bit slower, but that works fine for the server. What else do we have in this case? Well, that is our graphics card. Ancient, but it still works well. There's our Sasata H240 uh, controller. Very good for managing hard drives. If you do want more information on those, check out one of my related videos. Now, there's specifications of this machine at this point. Value proposal, what can we do with this machine? Video editing, you could do some graphic design, you could even do a uh, file server. That's right, let's launch in file server. We're going to use this as a file server. Very, very tidy. Okay, let's get into the server side of things. Let's quickly crack this machine open and let's see what we've got here. Now, zooming in, taking a closer look. Let's launch in. So first things first, I find most machines have a certain auditory note. Very important to assess this while you're in there. Now, uh, we'll just continue here, take note. These adapters that we're gonna install will accommodate 3.5 inch or the 2.5 inch hard drives. Oh, that's a good note, perfect. Okay, so removing, first and foremost, the DVD writer. Now, not gonna need this in this particular machine, so we will clear some space in these 5 point uh, two five inch bays. Now you'll notice there's a little screw there. We do have to remove that first, grabbing our handy screwdriver. Let's check the sound. Okay, that was a bit off tune. Let's try a different bit. Okay, that's perfect. Now very important, removing these screws. Yes, don't forget to like and subscribe. And once we have that removed, what was this? Well, this particular adapter here, oh, we got some cables in there, does actually house a hard drive. So probably don't really need to replace that adapter, but we will regardless. Now, hard drive's mounted, thank goodness. We'll remove those screws and it should just slide right out. Let's have a look. Perfect. Now, what have we got here? Hopefully a very large, awesome... Okay, it's a 1TB. Not not the biggest in the, in the world, probably a bit dated today, but it is a Western Digital Red NUS drive, very well suited to this purpose. Now, let's try and remove the upper one here as well. What have we got there? Okay, that was the SSDs. We don't need to remove them. Now, here they are. The Old Master hard drive mounting bracket. Really useful, they fit into those upper bays and give us a whole lot of extra ability to mount hard drives. Now you could mount quite a few. Oh, there's a problem there. Very important, we don't know what's in this package. Could be screws, let's make sure we put the cover on. Okay, let's find out what is in the package. Okay, I see some screws. Told you there'd be some screws. Okay, that looks pretty fair. We'll presume that's to mount the hard drives. What else have we got in here? Okay, I see lots of good things. There is our, oh wow, that's really, really cool looking. So lots of different adapters. This is the one that I like because there are so many good tunes that come out of this. So again, you need to assess, okay? Very important, assess the tunes that your hardware produces. This sounds really good. Excellent. Now, these are the mounting screws. So normally you would probably want to assess the product for mounting locations. So you could do that as well, but personally I'd rather go for the musical tunes like this. Beautiful. Okay, lots of other things here. You'll notice these particular holes are for mounting SSDs. So yes, you could absolutely load this up with lots of SSDs. Pretty cool. But for our purpose, we're just gonna load it up with a single, for now, hard drive. Let's do it. So very important, mounting screws. As you see, they come supplied with quite a lot of different ones. Sorry, hard to see the uh, description for each one, but we do have some for the rack, some for the hard drives incredibly useful and instructions highly recommend you check these out but since you're with an expert here today we don't need them okay let's continue more screws wow that's a lot of hardware supplied there that's excellent okay let's get back into this case now first things first test fit very important we'll just see what it looks like does it slot in perfect okay that's good hopefully you can see oh how rude of me let me zoom in for you okay so very important on this particular 
situation here. We've got to find the right bit for this job. Now, a little tricky. How do we mount this? Because remember, this is a workstation. They're a little different from our desktop machines. Let's quickly check some tunes here. May need to do some fine tuning to our machine. Okay, let's try a screw down the bottom. Theoretically, that should work. Let's... Oh. Oh, okay. That doesn't quite work. Uh, let's try it in the other slot. There it is. The joys of video editing. Let's continue. Yes, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, there it is. Well done. Okay, that's perfect. Now, one little catch. We do need to secure that with a second screw, but I think we've run out of positions to put it. We can still put one on the other side. That'll definitely help it from drifting around, but... Oh, these screws aren't really going to help. We're running into some problems. Okay, but for now, that's okay. We, we can mount it, we can insert, and... I wonder if there's a way. Let me study this quickly. No, there's no other way. Let's put the hard drive in. What are we putting in? Well, this is a 10 terabyte from Western Digital. You'll notice it's the red plus grading. Really capable and, oh yeah, very nice. Let's uh, move on. Oh, they even included the full description and the packaging. That's awesome. Really good job. Now let's launch into Fitment. Oh, not a bad tune. I suspect all the hardware produced some sort of tune. You just got to be fine tuned to hear it apparently. Okay, let's continue on. Quick assessment of the hard drive. That looks fairly standard, very heavy. So there must be a lot of hardware in one of these. Let's quickly throw that in. Now, very important to make sure we fit this the right way around for illustration purposes. Let's fit it the wrong way around. Okay, that does not work. We need to see our cable connections. That's much better. Perfect. Now, theoretically, this would be mounted upside down, but that's not such a big deal. We do need to align those screws. Looks like those two there will work. I don't see any others aligning. That's okay, we only need two that will secure it. Let me grab some screws. Now, looking at these, we'll zoom in a bit there, focus, beautiful. Those do look offset as well, they'll work perfect. Good tune coming from there. Now, we do need to supercharge slash magnetize our screwdriver bit. That tune seemed appropriate. Let's continue. Quickly thread those in. So it does help. Normally you wouldn't want to work over an open case, but because I've got these uh, magnetic screwdrivers, it really helps. Or should I say, I magnetize them. Okay, there it is, mounted, without a doubt. Now it is going to be upside down when we put it in. Is that going to be a problem? Well, we don't really have any other choice. There's nothing on the other side. That's okay, we'll just put it in. It's perfect. Cheers, old master. Let's see what this looks like once we've fitted it in. Doesn't matter that it's upside down, it's okay. Okay, so there it is. We have a hard drive mounted. Now, you will notice one technicality. There is going to be a bit of a challenge because we can't secure it using the HP latch and we can't remove it without destroying the case, which is no good. Oh, there's a hole there. We could use that. Should we try it? What do we got? Four rack. That must be the correct screw N normally. Maybe not on the workstation. We'll test it out anyway. A quick recharge, different bit, and we'll grab this screw here. Now notice the spare screws are located in the HPZ case there. Oh, uh, if I got... Oh no, that's not going to work. There's no thread and no stud into which to screw this. So that's going to be a bit of a problem. It's okay, we'll just plug in our hard drive. As long as you don't tilt this machine with a bit of force forwards and backwards, uh, your hard drives won't go anywhere, I think. That's okay, it'll have to do. Now, next one. Beautiful. Let's crack this open. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. Should close the cover, but now that we know what's in there, no need. We know what's going to fall and what won't fall. Yes, don't forget, like and subscribe. Okay, so let's get this spectacular hard drive open. Oh, I didn't expect that. That's a completely different tune. It's okay. Still a 10 terabyte. Yes, awesome. Okay, let's throw this in. Now, literally just throw it in. Boom. Okay, perfect. Ah, oh, it's backwards again. Very important. Make sure you fit this the right way around. And yes, we'll go through the full process. Probably could just cut this out. You know what needs to be done. Supercharge that screwdriver. And uh, in goes our mounting. Very easy the second time around. We know where to go and we know what could go wrong. Now, quickly slotting this in. Ah, yes, don't forget, we do have to put in those studs before we can press. Oh no, we're out. That's okay, we do have some, at least one that I removed earlier. But what do we do for the next one? Good question. Is one enough? I'm gonna argue you need a second now. Don't forget, if you remove your DVD writer, you do have four located in there as well. So let's nab some of these. 
very handy. You can reinsert them in those mounting locations there as well, if you so desire. Okay, let's put this one in on this side. Bit of a shame the mount doesn't really accommodate the Z420, uh, but presumably there will be some sort of screw that we could use through that hole there, but I'll have to do some research now. Checking the tune-up here, that does sound very, very interesting. Okay, no, it's looking good, but nothing else we can do there. That's going to remain slightly, slightly loose. Uh, not a major, major hack-up, I know, I know it's a bit problematic, but there's nothing else we can do here. That's just going to have to do. Don't tilt the machine. I have tried those as well, but they didn't work. Okay, let's go for... The last part, trueness to manage our hard drives. Very important. Now we'll quickly launch Windows. Yes, don't forget like and subscribe. Oh, there's so many pop-ups here. Let's just get rid of all of these. Okay, more pop-ups. Okay, there, there it is. We're taking our Z420 and actually remote connecting it using the HP Z840. Now you'll notice the hard drives here, just quickly checking them. I have actually initialized them already within Windows while we're doing. Now you'll see there are some four terabytes here as well. I have two of those in a RAID 1 configuration. But for the new ones that are going in, we're going to try and set these up rather as a RAID 0. So they're just going to be raw storage. Uh, probably won't be leaving this machine on all the time either. So it's really just a very organized backup of data in a RAID 0 format. Now you really probably would want to do some sort of parity. But in this case, 10 terabytes, they're not cheap. We're going to go for a very simple configuration. Oh my goodness, what's this? I thought this was true. Ah, oh, sorry, I'm just showing you a quick hard drive speed test. Lots of pop-ups there and a quick virus check. We found something. Okay, there it is, TrueNAS. So have a quick look through. We will rush through this really quickly. Keep an eye out for a future video on how to do this. So right now, setting up a hard drive pool. And very important here to check your parity and how you're actually setting this up. So right now, I have the option of a mirror and a stripe mirror would give us a duplicate so that would be two hard drives allocated as one hard drive now that's great in theory although if you buy both at the same time maybe it won't work so while one fails presumably the other won't be far off but for now we'll just go for very very simple uh, stripe setup here yes that does mean if the hard drive fails the data has gone fingers crossed the hard drive does not fail but you may want to consider other formations. So right now, setting up the password, oh, I may, may not want to make that too complicated. We do have to type this in multiple times and that's easy enough. Now, could select some other features here as well. There we have our three hard drives detected. Definitely t toggle the Microsoft account if you're accessing these through Windows, like I am with remote connection right now. And you could also permit sudo if you so desire. Okay. A little bit problematic with these file directory names make sure you give them unique names otherwise there will be a clash and zooming through this will be our next one I'm trying to find a name that doesn't contradict I had to play around with that a little bit and there's a third one as well Whew, that was fast okay now quick thing came to my attention 94 percent of you are not subscribed please consider subscribing it does help the channel immensely Okay, let's round this off. Very, very important here, getting all these hard drives set up. And there it is, HPZ420 file server. How cool do those hard drive adapters look? So definitely consider this as an absolute go-to for setting up a file server. The machines are relatively affordable. Hard drives, maybe not so affordable, but their prices are coming down now as well. And right now, this makes for a very powerful and capable file server super super useful for storing all this video data and auditory tunes kind of like these go 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 have a good one there now take it easy out there i'll see you on the next video okay now let's quickly inspect here that is the 10 gigabit ethernet adapter we will have to try and figure out how to install that on our hpz 840 when all the pci slots are full that's a mystery now quick flashback we do have the RTX 3080 occupying three slots. However, underneath those slots, there are gaps. Now I'm hopeful I can find a way to get an adapter in there. Who knows, that might be a word first, but so far, no good. But I think I have an adapter that's gonna do it. Stay tuned, we'll keep that ready for one of the next videos. Take it easy out there. Have a good one, see you on the next one.